Hello, it's Ian from Q-Tips and today I'm going to show you how to use layers between QGIS and Google Earth. Now the idea behind the tutorial today is that we want to compare historical uh, aerial imagery of the Teovitis Kloof Dam. Now we've got uh, quite a severe drought in the Western Cape so, the, so what I'm going to do is, is export and georeference imagery from uh, 2017 and then a couple of years before just to compare the dam levels at a similar time of year so I mean, these are current images from from this Teovitis Kloof Dam as you can see uh, the levels are very low so so the guys in the Western Cape are running out and this is just uh, just to use a topic which is which is relevant to to current um, yeah to to current news so let's do that now we're going to open up a session of QGIS so if we double click on our QGIS desktop that'll open up our, our application there we go so we've opened up QGIS and what I want to do is add a layer for the dams which is in my data folder and it's in this folder here hydrological water bodies dams and lakes and this layer will be fine that's a shapefile okay we open that up and these are all the dams for for southern Africa and then a couple bigger dams for the Sardic region and if we zoom in here this is where the Western Cape is and this is the dam that I'm interested in let's just double check that so this dam here if we select it using our little information tool that's the Teovitis Kloof dam so that is the correct one now we just want to make sure that that is the dam we select and export so now the idea is to this is currently a shapefile and we want to save this as a KML which is uh, the keyhole markup language keyhole markup language now your if you if you're also exporting a layer if you've done the same gone through the same steps as I have your default might be on shape files um, it will default to the last um, file format that you exported as so I'm going to choose keyhole markup language and then I'm going to name that file and I'm going to stick it in some arbitrary folder uh, where are we going here? Current, delete me, okay. So I'm just going to stick it in here. I'm going to call it Teovitis Kloof. Okay, I think I spelled that right. I'm going to save that. And then just make sure that you uh, select this little option here to only save the selected features. So you don't export all the other dams. We're just selecting and exporting the Teovitis Kloof dam uh, feature. I'm going to say OK. And that's added to our view. You can see a different color, so now we know that that is the only one that was exported. And the next step is to open this in Google Earth. So let's open up the Google Earth application. All right, so I'm just going to double click on my little Google Earth application. So now Google Earth is different to Google Maps. This is the actual application which, which you need to download independently and install on your PC. So it's not Google Maps which is viewed through a web browser. This is Google Earth, which is viewed through the actual Google Earth application. So the first thing to do is open up that new file we exported from QGIS. So we say open, navigate to that same folder. There it is, Teovitis Kloof, open. And Google Earth will zoom you into the feature or the extent of that layer that you've just added. And there we go. We can see uh, the, the current imagery that is being displayed is from the 22nd of March, 2017. And so what we'll do now is we'll, we'll uh, export and geo-reference this imagery from a couple different years and then compare the two, well, the different years uh, against each other. So the first thing you need to do, um, just turn off all your layers and in particular turn off your terrain layer because this, this terrain layer will, will uh, warp and drape the aerial imagery onto the three-dimensional surface and we need a two-dimensional surface for this geo-referencing exercise. So make sure that's turned off. And then something else you may, may just need to turn off is there's a, an automatic tilt option, which is under your tools and your navigation menu. Select this radio button that says do not automatically tilt. I think the default is automatically tilt while zooming. Just make sure it doesn't tilt while zooming. We say OK. And then just to make sure you're not tilted, if you go down to your north arrow, just hold the down arrow and then it should untilt it. See if you tilt it, it would be like that. So you just hold it down until it untilts it and starts slowly rotating. And then just to make sure that it orientates to north, again, click on the north arrow. And there we go. It's not going to tilt. 
So this is a little portion of DAM we're interested in. Um, and that's what we're going to export now. So first thing we need to do is to create some control points. Now control points are points that are spatially referenced on both the image that you can uh, then well compare to, to the points of an image to an actual layer that is spatially referenced. So we're going to do that using the place the place markers. So if you select, a, select the add place mark option, it's going to add a new place mark and we're going to dump the first one up here somewhere. We're going to call it A, so it's point A. And I just want to change that icon to something different. Uh, I'm just going to change it to a little square. Let's make this 0 .8, well, let's make it 0 0.8. And then just change that color to yellow so it's easily seen. And that A is getting in the way currently, so what we want to do is just say OK, choose your style and color, and then for the label, just make that zero, and that'll drop the, the little label off. So that's our first control point, and we need four of these. So we're going to have A, B, C, and D. So let's add the remainder of those now. So this is going to be B, and then you can just select and drag your marker into the into a place, <coughs> excuse me, and the next one is going to be down here bottom right, which I think we called D, so let's just drag that down here somewhere, maybe go a little further, okay, and then the last one C, C, and I'm just going to drag this box out the way and pop it down here. I'm also trying to place the markers on top of some dark imagery, um, like some plantations or agricultural land. Because it's yellow, it, it, as you export it, it might disappear behind similarly colored uh, imagery. So that's why I've popped it there. And they don't have to be <coughs> equidistant or uniform in any way. They just have to be from different parts of your drawing. All right, so there we go. These are the new layers added to our view. And we can turn off the Tiovatus Cliff Dam. And what I want to do is save these as a KML, which will then open up in QGIS. So the first thing I need to do is right-click on My Places and add a folder and call it Control Points. You can call it what you like, but they, I mean, they are control points. So I'll just call them Control Points. And just drag this, actually leave the folder there, it's fine. And then just drag your points and drop them into that folder. The order is not important as long as they're all underneath control points. Then right, well, select control points, right click, and we're going to save place as, and we're going to choose KML because that's the language we can read in QGIS. Control points is fine. We say OK. Now we'll be able to open that up in QGIS. Right, so we've got our control points. Now we need to export the imagery with these control points. So we're going to export this image here. So let's go to the file menu and say save, save image and we're going to turn these map options off because they are not important to us. And we're going to set the maximum resolution. Okay, that's great. Now this is for Google Earth Pro, you can set this maximum resolution. I think for previous versions of Google Earth um, that, that weren't Pro versions, you were limited to a, a certain resolution and it wasn't anywhere near this. Okay, we can say save, and uh, I'm going to call it, okay, we're already defaulting back to that same folder. I'm just going to call it 2017. Let's say save, and that should take a little while and feed along and eventually save out that new image. Okay, so that should have saved out. I'm just going to double check that in my explorer here. So where is it? It's under in the current folder that I created. Beat me. Okay, there it is there. So if we open it up, that is the exported image, and there we can already see our little control points, which we're going to use in QGIS. So that's for 2017. So we just now need to repeat that step for 2000 and let's just close this down. Repeat that step for a year earlier. Um, so if you've zoomed in and you see this little option down here. This is your historical imagery. You can also turn it on from this button at the top. So I'm just going to select the historical imagery to, to open it up a bit. And I'm going to go forward to our current image. 
which was the 23rd of March, January, January, February, March, April, 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 excuse me, April. And we're going to go back to a similar time a year ago. So where would that be? So that's, that's two years. That's two years ago. That's actually a good example. So, so why don't we go two years ago? So we've got 2015 versus 2017. This is the 28th of, of April. And the other one was from, wow, that's a big difference. But that's a, uh, from the, um, no, the 22nd of April, 2017. So if we go to export this, we need to just make sure that we can see the little control points. Okay, there we go. I'm going to say save as, save as image. Still see them, that's fine. This, uh, I don't know, actually, I think no, we can leave that on for now and then just say save image. I'm going to call this 2015 and save. Right, okay, so as soon as that is saved, it'll close that window down. And if we go back into our folder and check, we'll see that this new image 2015 has been added. And if we flip between the two, Images, we can see there's there's quite a significant uh, difference in the in the in the dam level for a similar time of year. Okay, so with that done, we can now import these into QGIS. So that is what we'll do next, and I think it's it's quite it's been quite a long tutorial already. So I'm just going to break this into two. So please join me for that second part where we where we geo-reference these images in QGIS. Okay.